A ransomware group is taking credit for a massive cyber breach. MGM Resorts International says it has been hit by a cyber attack. TVs were out in the casino, couldn't gamble. At this point, we're wondering, what are you paying for? It's September 11th, 2023, and over at the MGM casinos in Las Vegas, something just isn't right. All of a sudden, guests begin to notice that their room keys no longer work, the casino's computer systems are completely offline, their ATMs and slot machines are also broken, and as a result, the casinos begin losing millions of dollars with every passing day, all because of one simple but fatal mistake. The Las Vegas Strip is one of the most visited streets in the world. It also happens to be the biggest and most famous home for casinos, with over 30 of them spread across the Strip. The two biggest of these conglomerates are MGM Resorts and Caesars Entertainment, which combined own over half of these casinos. These casinos earn the two companies a combined average of around $71 million every single day. Now, of course, this money isn't exactly made ethically. Everyone knows that casinos use a multitude of shady business tactics in order to maximize the amount of money customers spend. Day in and day out, they rob people blind. But what if somehow someone out there was able to flip the switch? What if someone was able to publicly embarrass This has to be costing MGM millions of dollars an hour. Mess up the operations of MGM Properties says the hack crippled key cards, slot machines, and steal more money from these two companies than they could ever dream of winning at one of their establishments. They called themselves Scattered Spider, a small group of hackers associated with a much more notorious ransomware group, Black Cat. They were also relatively new to the scene, having only formed in May 2022, but that didn't stop them from becoming a major threat. According to this article, Scattered Spider had already hit over 200 different organizations in their short time on the internet. The biggest of these including companies like Psycho, Reddit, and Mandian, to which, after getting targeted, their CTO would state that this group is one of the most prevalent and aggressive threat actors impacting organizations in the United States today. The group primarily specialized in social engineering attacks, having the most success by using a method called vishing. Instead of using suspicious emails and websites to trick users into handing over sensitive information, the hackers would instead call the victim over the phone pretending to be a representative of an organization and eventually convince the employees to hand over things such as bank account numbers, phone numbers, email addresses, and anything else that could be used against them. Now, this type of attack isn't exactly uncommon. At one point or another, everyone's gotten the infamous call about your car's extended warranty or watched a video of some guy trolling people who do these attacks. However, the thing that made Scattered Spider so effective at these kind of attacks was their English accent. When reached out to on Telegram, a person who claimed to be a member of Scattered Spider said that the group contains fewer than 10 people, most of which are friends and are based in places like the United States and the United Kingdom. Because of this, all of the crew speaks fluent English, which allowed their calls to sound much more official and convincing rather than an automated call system. When asked about possible motives, the member responded by saying that the group focuses on companies valued from $15 billion to $45 billion dollars and that they're very careful with who they decide to target. For example, they avoid hospitals because that's a jail sentence just waiting to happen. They said if a company has money and meets their requirements, it doesn't matter what field it's in, they'll hit it. The group's motive is simply to get rich quickly and get away with it. And now, they're coming up on their biggest target yet, and unfortunately, it meets all of their requirements. Kind of like how you're being targeted right now. Thankfully, Aura is the sponsor of today's video. Earlier, I mentioned how a ton of scammers use vishing to try and steal money from you with things like scam phone calls. But do you ever wonder how they got your number in the first place? It's because data brokers actively buy and sell your sensitive information to these scammers. But it's not just your phone number. Info such as your full name, email, and even your home address is all completely out there for anyone to look at. Luckily, Aura can actually identify these data brokers exposing your info and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They also monitor your info for breaches, scanning both the dark web and surface web and will instantly notify you if they find anything suspicious. On top of that, they also have a ton of other features to keep you safe, such as a password manager to make all your passwords complete 
completely unhackable like this without ever having to memorize them, a VPN, antivirus, identity theft insurance, and more, all for just one affordable price at $12 a month. You can either let people continually exploit and profit off of your private information, or you can get started with Aura on a two-week free trial by going to aura.com slash Caleb is salty, or click the link in the description. In early September 2023, the group had made the decision to target MGM casinos. Their initial plan for this attack was actually fairly complicated. They wanted to hack into certain slot machines at these casinos, change the odds in the machines, rigging them to win every time, and then hire people to travel to these casinos in real life and milk the machines for all of their money. A trick straight out of Ocean's 13. But as we know, life isn't always like the movies. And as it turned out, the software used to run these slot machines was a lot harder to crack than they thought. So instead, they decided to shift gears and resort to their backup plan. They moved over to a website called LinkedIn and began to look through a list of the casino's employees. After that, it was presumed that they then selected some sort of highly privileged employee off the list and after finding as much sensitive information on them as possible, they called MGM's support desk impersonating as them using the information as a weapon. MGM help desk, how can I help you today? Hey there, my name is I tried logging into my account this morning, but it just won't seem to let me in. So I was just wondering if I could get like a password reset or something. And after a bit of back and forth, the hackers were able to convince the employee into resetting the password for them, subsequently granting them access to the casino's entire back end. One simple 10 minute phone call was responsible for a catastrophic amount of damages. And now that they were in, the group silently began to steal confidential data belonging to thousands of the casino's customers. This info included things like their names and contact info, date of birth, driver's license numbers, and in some cases, their social security numbers. Meanwhile, MGM's management had created a makeshift war room where a mix of executives, IT professionals, and lawyers began strategizing on how to minimize the damage. They tried forcing the hackers out by shutting down every one of their Okta servers, but at that point, it was too late. Eventually, the group would send a ransom note to the casino, stating that if a deal isn't reached, they shall carry out additional attacks. Sadly, MGM refused this deal, and as a result, even more chaos began to ensue. Since the casino's computers were now offline, employees had to start paying out customers' winnings in cash, and it was reported that guests even had to be checked in manually with a pen and paper. At the same time, dozens of videos began to surface online from angry customers showcasing things like rows of hacked slot machines, as well as other issues like their digital room keys not working, leaving them locked out of their hotel room. All of this would come to a head on September 11th, when you finally subscribed to my channel, when MGM would finally put out a statement regarding the issue, confirming that they began an investigation, as well as completely shut down their website, leaving only this mysterious message for over five days. Shortly after hearing that, season Caesars Entertainment would also go on the record claiming that pretty much the exact same thing happened to them a couple weeks back, where an unidentified group of hackers stole customer info from over 65 million of their members, with the only difference between these two being that Caesars actually paid the hackers $15 million in exchange for the data to be deleted. And while this did seem to solve their issue as shortly after the ransom was paid, the palace became fully operational again. Only time will tell if the customer data was actually deleted or if it will surface online somewhere in the future. It took 10 long days before MGM finally announced that all of their hotels and casinos were back to operating normally. And after three weeks, MGM Resort's CEO reported that the whole incident was totally behind them. Even though this marked the end to all of their immediate problems, the lasting effects of this attack were arguably much much worse. You see, this attack was no silent matter. It made national headlines and was covered by almost every major news outlet under the sun, exposing everyone to exactly what happened and how MGM handled the situation. Almost immediately, the conglomerate started facing a ton of backlash for seemingly prioritizing and protecting their revenue rather than their clients' personal information. If MGM possibly had better protocols in place for password recovery, or gave their employees a bit better training, this entire scandal might have not even happened in the first place. However, at the time, this backlash was the least of their worries. Inside of a regulatory filing to the US Securities and Exchange Commission, it was revealed that as a result of the attack, MGM Resorts took a financial hit of over $100 million. 
Keep in mind this number doesn't include the various lawsuits the casino also received, which undoubtedly cost a pretty penny to deal with as well. Additionally, the stock prices belonging to both of the casinos tanked significantly, with Caesars dropping from a value of $60 per share in late July down to $46, and MGM going from $51 down to just $36 a share, a staggering 27% decrease. As for the fate of the hackers, this part was the most interesting to me. Normally after a causing a disturbance as widespread as this one, the hackers would be caught by authorities within a few days or weeks and either get severely punished or, in rare cases, get offered some sort of cybersecurity job working for the organization that caught them. However, Scattered Spider's case played out a little differently. According to various news articles, it seems as though the FBI had actually known the identities of at least a dozen members tied to the group and have been keeping an eye on them for over a year before the incident. Yet for some unknown reason, the group was never reprimanded. A chief executive at one of the companies Scattered Spider previously hacked attributed the FBI's low response to a potential lack of employees. Nowadays, it's not so uncommon to see cybersecurity experts leave their job working for law enforcement to a private sector which offers them higher salaries. Law enforcement, certainly at the federal level, has all the tools and resources they need to be successful in going after cyber criminals. They just don't have enough people. Another issue the FBI had to deal with is the overall loose-knit nature of the group itself. Like I mentioned earlier, Scattered Spider is composed of small clusters of individuals who collaborate on and off specific jobs. This type of structure can make it difficult for the FBI to coordinate internally across its many field offices around the country. To further support this theory, it was even reported that numerous field offices were individually investigating different hacks launched by the same group without immediately being aware of their connection, which ended up delaying the process. Regardless, the entire attack is a lesson in security and awareness. It doesn't matter how how advanced a company's security systems are, the weakest link in the system will always be us, people, easily deceivable if caught off guard.